want to tell this story. This is a well-known story in eastern Kentucky, and there's probably very few people ha who have not heard of this girl or this young woman. Um, even if you don't follow these missing uh, unsolved cases stories, you've probably heard her name if you live anywhere in the eastern Kentucky news coverage. So, her name is Crystal Gail Hall Branham. She was from Pikeville, Kentucky. At the time she went missing, she went missing March 1st, 2009. She's Caucasian, height 5 foot 3, around 110 pounds. She has red hair and brown eyes. She went by the nickname Red, and um, she often goes by Crystal Branham. Her ears and navel are pierced, and she has a tattoo on the bottom of her left leg with the name Willie, W-I-L-L-Y. And there is an outline of a heart tattooed at the top of her right arm. The tattoo of the of Willie and the heart tattoo are outlined, but they're not colored in. Crystal was last seen in Pikeville, Kentucky on March the 1st, 2009. She was home alone in her apartment on Kentucky Avenue. She was talking to a friend on the phone when she stated someone was coming in her back door. Hal was never seen or heard from again. She did not own a vehicle at the time that she went missing. She was last seen wearing a long-sleeved hooded shirt, a red long-sleeved hooded shirt, blue jeans, and leather slip-on shoes. Detectives at Post 9 with the Kentucky State Police ask anyone having any information to contact them at 606-433-6111. Seven seven one one, and just give some different stories and different uh, information that I can find. This is from Unsolved Appalachia. I remember very well when this took place, and I remember watching the news coverage of it, and it was just, it was a big story, and the fact that very little has been said in, in updates over the years. Um, I search and I search and I'll keep on searching. Anytime I hear gossip about her, I take it to the police. Now this was from her grandmother. I'm doing everything I can to find my baby. Crystal Branham Hall, 24 had been staying at her sister's apartment at 108 Kentucky Avenue in downtown Pikeville on the night of March the 1st, 2009. She was on the telephone talking with a friend when she told them that someone was at the back door. Now, some stories say that she told them someone was at the back door. Other stories, she says someone is coming through the back door or coming into the back door meaning that someone had walked into her kitchen. On the night of March the 1st, 2009, was the last time that anyone spoke with her. Looking at the Google Map image of Kentucky Avenue, you can see that there are several streets and buildings in the vicinity. The street is mostly townhomes packed in side by side, with what appears to be other residential areas on the street behind. Crystal was speaking on the phone that night, which would give whoever was at the back door the obscurity of darkness. I don't believe that the person who showed up that night was a stranger, and I would assume she would probably have let them in. I haven't seen where there was any mentions of signs of a struggle. Given that she was staying in the apartment at the time, you'd think there would have been any loud, uncharacteristic noises. Someone would have heard something.
Also, Crystal's purse and jacket were left in the apartment. So if someone, if she let someone in, it didn't seem as, if she left with someone, it didn't seem as if she was expecting to be gone for very long. The warmest it got that night was 35 degrees. I think if she had intended on being gone for very long, she would have at least taken her coat. Um, I think if someone that she knew came to the door and asked her, do you want to go for a ride? Do you want to go somewhere with me? Most women, the first thing they would do is grab their purse. She didn't own a car, so she didn't leave herself driving. So if she did get in the car and leave with someone, um, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense that she just left her purse and stuff behind, but... Maybe they just asked to run down to the store or something like that. I don't know. There's been so many rumors and speculation over the years, so many different theories. Um, keep in mind that this person in this story does say that it was 35 degrees that night. So if she thought she was going to be out for very long, she would definitely have put on a sweater or a jacket. Crystal was the mother of three small children, but due to struggles with addiction and depression, she had asked her grandmother to take care of them. However, she called her children every night without fail. She would talk to them before they went to bed and wish them sweet dreams, and she visited them several times a week. She knew she had problems, and she cared enough about her children to make sure that they were taken care of and she she was making sure that they were not only taken care of, but taken care of by a relative, someone she trusted and knew these kids were not going to end up in foster care where they would be separated and end up with who knows, you know, what kind of life. That's basically all the information that I was able to find on not, online. Most of the actual news articles addressing what happened to her are now have now been removed. Of course, that make, makes things a bit more difficult. I did happen to speak to one of her family members who wished to remain anonymous. They claimed a few weeks after Crystal's disappearance, there was a shoe and an earring found on Sebulon Highway in Pikeville. These items did match the description of the shoes and earrings that Crystal was last seen wearing. There was also some blood found on the shoe. The items were collected, samples were sent for DNA analysis, and that was the last anyone heard about it. Now, I know Pikeville, Kentucky myself pretty well, and I know where Kentucky Avenue is. In comparison to Sebulon Highway, I would say... It is, according to how fast you're driving, it's probably a 10-minute drive or so, 10 to 15 miles or so. But just to be correct on that, I will look that up on Google Maps. So it appears that maybe she'd gotten in the car with someone. Maybe someone dragged her out of the apartment. Like, like the person said, no one reported hearing any screaming or, or sounds, maybe, maybe her mouth was um, covered and she wasn't able to scream. There have been so many rumors and speculation over the years and, and a lot of it goes to drug dealers. A lot of it is attributed to drug dealers she owed someone money. Some people believe it had to do with a uh, an ex, a relationship gone bad. <clears throat> uh, Crystal's boyfriend at the time. Okay. <clears throat> According to this person on Unsolved Appalachia, I was also informed during the conversation that the shoe and earring have since been lost. According to the family, their attempts at getting any information from authorities have been frustrating. They feel like they're being put off 
and avoided. Even if you don't have anything new to report, the knowledge that whoever is working on the case cares enough to stay in touch means more than I can put into words. There were theories and speculation that this young woman was a police informant and that maybe she had gotten, maybe she was being held someplace in order to keep her from being found out. But after this many years have passed, whatever case she may have been uh, involved in, you would think that they would have solved it by now. And that's always a theory. There's many others. Like I said, people theorize that she was still doing drugs and that she had gotten, that she owed drug money to somebody. Crystal's boyfriend at the time was a guy named Rory Hall. I haven't seen anything that would be considered conclusive evidence to say that he had anything to do with her disappearance. No one actually saw them together the night she disappeared, and if they did, they haven't come forward. Um, Crystal was last seen in an, an apartment in Pipeville, Kentucky, on Kentucky Avenue. She was home alone at the apartment at the time, talking to a friend on the phone when she said someone was coming in the back door. And that's all. That's that's everything that there is on this. Now, I can go through some of these. There's a Facebook page dedicated to her. I'll go by and see when was the last time that it was updated. It was updated March the 3rd. It's now been 14 years since Crystal went missing from Pikeville, Kentucky. We had no leads to go on then, and we are no closer now. Over the years, we have heard many rumors and stories, but no solid leads. Someone out there knows something. I thank those who continue to share her pictures and her stories and continue to pray for her and her family. Every year on this day for 14 years, I have posted how I can't believe another year has gone by with a picture of Crystal Branham Hall's missing flyer. Another year and so much she has missed. My big sister, Karen Geckel, gave birth to her at St. Rita's Hospital. That beautiful red hair was there from the start. She hated it, but everyone else loved it. Women always commented how they wanted her hair color. She has a smile that is contagious, and she knew no strangers. She had a giggle, especially when she was up to something. When you heard that giggle, you knew it was her. Her and I had an instant connection. We weren't just aunt and niece. When I was a teenager, I would take her cruising and singing. I miss her so much. I wish I had answers, and our family needs answers so badly. Fourteen years of not knowing is the hardest thing. I pray someday we will find out where she is, and I will never give up on that. This is from someone who knew her. This has been weighing on me lately. I went to school with Crystal. We were we are from a town where everyone knows everyone and everyone knows about everyone. Well, not everyone knows everyone in Pikeville, Kentucky, but it's like it's not Maybury, I'll say that. It's a bigger town than what a lot of people think and you have the university U Pike and um the hospital brings in a lot of people from out of town now. There's some new businesses in town that have brought in some people from out of our area and from out of town, but it is a small town, and stories like this, it, they, it brings people together, but it also divides people at the same time because one, one part of the community, one... Um, social part of the community will say this is just a drug addict this girl was just from a poor neighborhood and got involved in drugs and the other part of the town will say 
she deserves answers as much as anybody. And her family deserves to know the truth. And regardless of what her circumstances may have been in her life. So I'll continue reading this. It's from her Facebook page. How is this still a mystery? I, I can't understand. I pray this is the year that we get answers. Her family deserves this. I look at my kids and I can't imagine what they go through. I'm not impactful anymore, but I will reach out and say to anyone who knows something, make it known. Get answers to this family. They are sweet, kind people and they need answers. Well, like I said, the rumor mills... The rumors went from everything from it was her boyfriend to it was someone there in the in the apartment complex, uh, maybe the boyfriend or, or a neighbor of one of the people that lived there came in, attacked her. I, I have trouble with that theory because if someone is going to go into an apartment and attack someone there inside the apartment. They're going to attack them there and more than likely they're going to leave them there. The only thing, the only reason that someone would have removed this young woman from her apartment was because they could be identified by her. It is possible that she did have problems with some people and that someone sent someone there to get her that she wouldn't recognize. More than likely, it was someone that she did know. And maybe they just asked her to walk outside and talk. And she didn't think anything of it. And the next thing you know, she's gone. Um, I, I don't know. There's been so many theories and speculations, like I said, around this area about what it could have been. This is also from her aunt. I haven't shared this in a long time. Not because it doesn't still weigh on my mind. It's heavier on my heart. I just have to take a break for my own sake sometimes. I made a promise that I would never give up searching and I never will. I will keep that promise. I still keep track of people and rumors even when I don't talk or post. I still send messages, emails, and I do follow-up stories. Any time a person is found or a body is found, I want to know. People contact me or make them post some podcasts about Crystal's story. Crystal was 25 when she went missing. She would be 38 today, and her boys, 19, 18, and 16, have grown up without their mom. Now, this was posted a year ago. She's still been, she's been missing but not one day has she been missing from our hearts. Some of you may remember this a few years back. I think it was in Texas. There was a video that was being put out on the news and stuff about a young woman who had come up to a door of someone's house and was ringing the doorbell. And they had a handcuff or some type of ligature um, tied around their wrist as though they had broken free. And they had been tied. Um, a lot of people, when they saw that video, were posting it on Facebook asking, could that have been Crystal? Because it did, it did resemble her, and it did look a lot like her. And a lot of people got their hopes up that maybe it was her, but it turned out that it wasn't. There are just so many rumors, and that's basically what most of it is. Now, this is from 2013, and this is from Web Sleuths. This is a comment from a user, so this goes into a little bit more detail, but like I say, a lot of this is just rumor and speculation. So now, these are posts that were taken off of the now uh, deleted website called Topics, which was just a rumor mill. Natasha talks to her sister regularly. Now, keep in mind, as I read these comments, these are from topics where people were anonymous and they didn't use their real names and they didn't um, 
they, you know, just told whatever they wanted to because nobody knew who they were. And some of the posts were taken down, but people would copy them before they were taken down. So now this person, this person is saying that Crystal is alive and well and speaks to her family. Apparently she is living in Lexington. According to Natasha, her sister is hiding from the cops. Some crime that happened around the time she disappeared. I don't know what it will take for Natasha to tell you the truth. She says she will never, never tell where her sister is because of the cops. She and Jeremy both know where Crystal is. It is sad that she is letting you live in misery. No respect for you at all. That is all I know, but I felt n that I needed to tell you that. Now keep in mind, that is a comment that was taken from the website Topics. That was a gossip column, a gossip page. So, here's another comment. This is such a sad situation. Well, I don't know if this is the same girl or not, but a young girl that I know of told me this time last year that there was a young girl that was missing and that they had a picture posted of her at Walmart. She said these guys from up around Virgie was supposed to have taken her to taken her from her apartment and that the girl was on the phone with a friend. But she said these guys took her and murdered her and mutilated her and hid her body in Letcher County. Well, if it was true that the earring and the shoe was found in the Sebulon Highway, they would have been going the opposite direction from Letcher County, but, you know, no one, no one really knows. Um, please don't jump to any conclusions that this is your daughter, because I can't remember the girl's name. But if you or anyone else is miss, know of someone missing in this area, it would be worth checking it out. I asked the girl that if she knew this for a fact, why didn't she contact the police? She said she heard it from a friend of hers and that she feared for her life. Um, there was another theory that went around that her body, that she had been taken to an area where there was a water tower and that her body had been dumped into this water tower. Now, I found that pretty highly um, speculative because, uh, first of all, they would have had to have carried her body up to the water tower to have thrown her down inside of it unless she was alive and they just forced her up this ladder but then later, the, the rumor went from it being that she was placed in a water tower to being that she was placed in one of these big water containers and covered up, covered up in the ground. Um, so you see, there was always so many, many different stories. Even the rumors have slowed down. I've still been out looking and talking to people. I've been trying hard to make up new posters, but when you're doing this alone and you have no help, it takes time. She is on Name Us and all those other websites. Why the state police do not have her on their page, I do not know. The detectives have been no help whatsoever. They keep making up excuses. Uh, the more I know about the law, I will not give up till I find out what has happened. The only rumor I keep hearing now is that there is some guy named Nathan who knows what is who knows that she is being held around Lexington by drug dealers, but he won't speak to me about it. I'm saying it's probably just a made up story, but I have been in contact with the Steve Wilco show and they say that they're not taping right now. Um I would like anyone who knew and hung around with Crystal around the time of her disappearance to get into contact with me. And um, you can contact me on my Facebook page or Crystal's Myrtle Sue 2000 at yahoo.com. Now that is from, this was posted back in 2013. I don't know if that link is still good or not. 
Most of these are from seven to nine years ago or older, and there's really nothing new. The family does update the Facebook page, and they do uh, have phone numbers listed and stuff like that, but there's very little else to go on other than rumor. I don't know if she was on a cell phone or if she was using the house phone. You would think that if she had a cell phone that they would maybe have been able to trace her calls, to trace the location of the phone. This was 2009. I know that technology probably wasn't as advanced as it is now, but other than rumors floating around in Pike County and all around Lexington and other parts of the state, that's really all there is to go on. And I'll just repeat one more time. Crystal Branham went missing March the 1st, 2009, from Pikeville, Kentucky. She was last seen on Kentucky Avenue. She was known to have been wearing a red hooded shirt. Crystal Branham Hall. This was up, updated August the 18th, 2014. Troopers say 24-year-old 24, 24 Crystal Branham Hall has not contacted any of her family members since March the 1st, 2009. They say she was last seen on Kentucky Avenue in Pikeville, the same street where she lived. She was 5 foot 4 and weighed around 110 pounds. She has shoulder-length red hair and brown eyes. She possibly has a tattoo on the lower leg of the letter H. Now, we were told that she had a tattoo of the name Willie, W-I-L-L-Y, on her lower leg and a heart outline on her shoulder. I didn't see anything about the H. That's all there is right now. If you have any information, you can contact the Kentucky State Police, Post 9 in Pikeville, Kentucky, at 606-433-7711.